status of the species um, being monitored at least remains consistent and doesn't continue to decline and also ref to inform the management actions in the future. So you need to know what, what is going on on the ground, whether it's control, controlled grazing is actually benefiting the species like you think it is. So we were able to reduce some of those costs, um, particularly the compliance reporting. So I just, <laughs> I, wow. so, uh, uh, this is just for effect. <laughs> yeah, but. Can you zoom this a little bit more also? I can read it. No, my question is, um, <laughs> my question is the um, HCP cost model, Aaron, would you mind uh, spending a, a few sentences on uh, who developed that model and, and how relevant that is? And, and, uh, some some other things around that because I think it would help a lot of the people to understand the cost model a, a, a little better the relevance. Sure thing, and I this is just a screenshot of one of the the multiple page the worksheets of what we we wrestled with, and so um you know my history in this plan started must have been twenty. 16 or 15-ish, late, late in the game. And our firm, long before I started there, developed the first draft, I think, of this. And I don't know what it looked like, what the size was. And then, um, for, because so much of it was intimately involved with what Fora does on the ground, and Fora's got the lamb across the street, all that, they had been kind of adopted it and built on it. And, um, I think the person, this person, Jonathan Brinkman, who um, I think it's an amazing, he did an amazing job. <laughs> so I actually think the extent of detail is extraordinary. So um, I want to give him props for doing this. Um, so if you have specific questions, I recommend talking to Jonathan. But it's it's. Very detailed, and so right. You're not supposed to read the line items. It's just for effect. But essentially, there might be a task. Each row would be a task, and and so um, and each column that's sort of shaded a little bit might be a specific cost for a habitat management area, right? Because those have different resources in them, and so we would have multipliers, and then we'd explain our assumptions for each multiplier, and extrapolate cost for that action on that piece of land and then amazingly have all these link spreadsheets and, and enter and it comes up with an answer. So this is you know this is just gives you a sense of scale of what we're what we're working with. So it's very detailed. Um, back to the methods and assumptions. So I told you we tried to um, extrapolate the costs. Uh, from the cost model to implement the habitat management plan. And I want to really make clear that those costs are not readily extractable. So we had to make a lot of assumptions from what was taken from the cost model and adapted to this exercise. The reason why I say that are pretty critical and really part of the theme, I, I think, for today is that the HCP costs were estimated base-wide. And that includes a lot of sharing of resources. Staffing, and that's a big driver of cost. Knowledge, so the land management experts, because this takes expertise to implement, and the, and the capital. So there's a lot of resources that are shared, and that's how the ACP has been, been developed over the years. So there's a lot of efficiencies by sharing those resources. Um, so in order to step down the cost for all these sort of activities and line items, we really had to make extensive, extensive assumptions, and we did in our in our adopted cost model. Essentially, we took a version of the HCP cost model, eliminated some things, added columns, and tried to try to use the framework of that as much as possible. And we document our assumptions, but as you can see, just from that one spreadsheet, there are a lot there, there are a lot of lines to um, document assumptions for. I should add too that if you know 
this is a process that could take, should, you know, if you want to start from scratch and get as accurate as possible, it would take months. And we would go to each jurisdiction one on one and say, okay, what kind of resources do you have? What do you think you can, you can provide? You know, how much do you spend for your, your contracting? Those sorts of things. But in lieu of that, we had to make assumptions. Um, so what we did was estimate the cost for the habitat management areas where the management responsibilities are. And we also did the development parcels with management responsibilities. We had, of course, some folks um, represent jurisdictions in this room don't have HMAs. They have um, development parcels with specific management responsibilities. And we use the general cost categories that are used to, from the ACP to estimate the cost for the habitat management plan. And the benefit here, as best as possible, um, it allows some direct comparison of relative costs. And, you know, it, if you, my, my initial hope before I really dove into this cost model is that we'll just be able to take each line item, for example, invasive species control, that is a general responsibility under the H Habitat Management Plan and the Habitat Conservation Plan, and just divide it by the area, the cost of that, and say, okay, we have a, a per unit cost, let's just allocate it by area. That was really impossible because those costs really integrate a lot of things um, that are shared amongst the jurisdictions. So we had to assume that the, that sharing wouldn't happen under this exercise. So we couldn't just take something out, do some simple extrapolations and apply, apply it, multiply it, say times, just the area. But where we could, we did. There's some things we could do a per unit area. And so we allocated costs based on area the size of the habitat management areas. So I'm just going to dive right in. And again, so the costs are, are estimates. But the first thing, so I'll start with the cost savings. <laughs> um, we didn't include startup costs, so I'm going to have a hard time seeing the screen. <laughs> Can you hear me? Essentially, we include in the far right column the average annual costs. Does the next slide have it bigger? Um, yeah, the packet includes a couple of things that are different from here. This is it should be in your packet. It is. It is. Yeah, and and really the purpose of this is to say um, we didn't include habitat conservation plan startup costs for program administration in our estimates for the, uh, under the Habitat Management Plan because we assumed that each jurisdiction would <coughs> absorb those program administrative costs. Maybe it's, so for example, we have general office space. We assume you're not gonna rent more office space to implement an HMP. So we didn't include that in the HMP cost estimates. Right, so actually it is in here. <laughs> So that's the next one. So this just gives you a, a sense, and we don't have to worry about this because these are the, the estimated costs under the HCP. Um, and this table, table two, and there's a lot of details in here, and um, I think it would be a little hard to follow if I was to go over everything. It would take a long time here. So I want to say now that um, please, please ask me if you have any questions I can work through the assumptions in detail and our, our methods in detail. And you know, if you're, if you're interested in seeing how the cost would change with us adjusting the assumptions based on your input, we're happy to, we're happy to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna actually go to the screen. So table two, um, just Moving from left to right, this is an estimate of the program administrative costs by jurisdictions. And the cost item column on the far left includes the general breakdown from the Habitat Conservation Plan cost model that, that was shown in the prior table. 
staff costs, insurance, and on and on and on. And the next column to the right, HMP, Habitat Management Plan Cost Estimate Method, just shows essentially the assumptions we made um, for, for calculating estimated costs by jurisdiction. And so this is, again, the kinds of things we can adjust just with a change of a number in a, in a spreadsheet. Um, based on your feedback. So, for example, in this case, we assumed um, that staff costs would be 20% of the HCP costs for Monterey County, simply because they have considerably more land to manage than um, the other entities. And for the smaller, the entities with smaller management responsibilities by size, we estimated 10% um, of the cost for managing their HMAs as the HCP. And so you can read down that column to get a sense of how we make these, these assumptions. Yeah. So with the individual jurisdictions, you didn't vary the cost um, based on the size that they have of developable acreage. You just kind of said, regardless of their size, they allocated the same amount. We did, and that is for the habitat management actions, the things that really require, I think, more human power covering land. This is just for program administration, so. It, so regardless of the size, you're saying this is kind of a fixed cost? Yes, yes, so, right, so we just assume staffing costs would be 20%, for example, of, for Monterey's county, 20% of the ACP costs, we, simply because they have more land. So, you know, that could be one cause for increase, but, you know, in reality, it could be 10%. It was just for the sake of this exercise to acknowledge that Monterey County has more habitat management responsibilities. And so, on down the road, you could, the columns, um, the HMP cost estimate method, you could just read for yourself, um, and if you disagree with the assumptions, we can easily adjust them if you want to get a better assessment of what you think your costs are going to be. And so moving to the right, yeah. It might be a stupid question, but does we get, does Monterey get a special one? <laughs> 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 is the buy one, get one free? These are the free? jurisdictions <laughs> with each other. So we don't so have any habitat management that makes that Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's a good point. And I didn't show that slide. For some reason, I just assumed everyone be able to memorize all their land ownership <laughs> in Fort Ord. Um, correct, so these are, moving to the right-hand columns, estimated cost by jurisdictions. These are for the jurisdictions with habitat management areas. And those have considerably more habitat management responsibilities as dictated by the Habitat Management Plan and the HCP um, than those jurisdictions that have development parcels with habitat management actions in them. So that's why you don't see Monterey, the city of Monterey in here, or, or Seaside, for example. We'll get to your, your estimates later. Um, startup costs, moving to the right. Again, we excluded that, assuming that for program administrative purposes, you will use your own facilities and resources. And then to the right of that column, we use, we just, for comparison's sake, we show the HCP average annual cost and for each task. And then you can move on down to the right to find your corresponding cost for your entity. And one thing I want to emphasize here is that you lose a lot of the benefits of sharing resources, whether it's staffing or, or legal assistance or financial assistance or analysis assistance. You essentially have to replicate everything for each individual jurisdiction that has been planned base-wide for the cooperative. So that was the assumption we had to make for this exercise. Of course, that might not be what, what the jurisdictions decide to do in reality. They might work together. UC Santa Cruz has about 600 acres of habitat management area. Are you assuming they'll fund their own management exercise? I don't see it. Yeah, well. yeah, and I apologize for, for not mentioning that. So we, we didn't include UC and um, state parks in this. 
One, because I think we felt there was just too much speculation because we've been doing a lot of the management already. You have a lot of infrastructure for doing that. So I think it was just beyond, really beyond our ability to estimate how much on top of what you're doing now would need to be spent for startup. Essentially, you've been doing a lot, you as in UC and State Parks are doing this right now. So would there be an additional startup cost? So I don't, I, we, Well, that just seems counter to the sharing model that you're proposing. Oh, no, this isn't proposing a sharing. There is no... The, the ACP does. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Well, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, plus, I don't think you've had these, you know, I don't know how many assumptions, 20? Have you had them vetted with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and... No. No, no, and I want to make clear that this was for, this is an exercise only, very draft, and as I was saying earlier, this is a kind of process where we would go to every entity and, and first get your information to refine our assumptions. And that takes months, if not, you know, 12 plus months at a time. Given that we had about two to three weeks to do this, we had to go to assumptions. So this is not, this is not a final estimate. These are really ballpark estimates based on the time and limited information we have. Then, um, you know, you could vet them with the wildlife agency, but there could be things that you would propose to the wildlife agencies, not for vetting. One final basic question. I had nothing to do with these spreadsheets, but I do have a degree in environmental studies. Why do we go to this much extent when for hundreds of years these endangered species have survived? So the basic question is, why can't jurisdictions cordon off those properties and do some weed control from time to time instead of all of this super intensified mini management. Well, that's, I mean, that's really something that gets negotiated with uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, CDFW, and BLM in the reserve management planning process. Well, the further legal question is, if you do that, is, is there a take? How can there be a take when you're not allowing anybody or any activities in those areas? Well, it's it's assumed. So the Habitat Conservation Plan, so we're not creating... No, HMP. I'm going to the HMP. Right. So we took from the Habitat Conservation Plan the management actions. And those were from those the HMP. Yeah. They're from the HMP and they have cost estimates. And again, the, the Habitat Management Plan and the HCP provides a series of tools as a toolbox. So if you leave things alone, and we know that um, there are effects that happen to natural ecosystems beyond um, folks accessing lands. You can't just cordon it off and it returns to nature. Invasive species um, colonize very readily, and that is a huge issue, particularly for um, the plants that are would be covered under an HCP or would be addressed under an HM. <coughs> So um, the HMP is assuming if you just cordon it off, you're cre you're creating a potential take, even though you're not getting any take permits. Is that no. correct? That's not correct. No, no. Okay. There's well, the HMP is not assuming that things are just going to be cordoned off and that's it. Let make that assumption. That's what I'm asking. If you do that, is the take going to is it, is there a legal take there, and you're not doing any development? Well, that would be an answer for the Fish and Wildlife Service and CDFW, but no. I mean, they're the ones no, who... No, you say no. I, I say no. Okay. If you don't do anything to it, no. Good. So, these are, again, just to recap this table, this is a program administration cost by jurisdiction. So, I'm showing you this because this is the kind of thing, you don't worry about the numbers because you, sh you, you should have this on paper format. There's a lot in here to process, but I want to put this up here and I have a summary table next that um, let you know that we can go through the details here and they're here and then also incorporated into this um, version of the cost model. I just want to take one moment to 
interject, our, we, we do have, we allocated about, from about 11 o'clock on this topic, so yeah. uh, we have another important thing to go through. So it's up, something to the, to the group's discretion to some degree, but if we want to get through the agenda, yeah. can't keep that in mind. So here, yeah, thanks Josh. So this is a summary table, essentially, that on, in the right set of columns under average annual cost slash HMP, where we um, cost out the various management-related activities under the habitat management plan, and then to, in the, the set of columns to the left that come from the average annual cost from the habitat conservation plan. And the, all the columns in under the hab, average annual cost of the HCP come from table 9.3 of the HCP. And so what you see here is just a significant increase of cost in all these management actions, um, not just for, for habitat, well, not for habitat restoration because there are no, um, no responsibilities assumed um, as part of the average annual cost. They're integrated, they're just set aside for an annual cost, or a startup cost, apologies, um, simply because we don't have a term over which they must be implemented. But habitat management and maintenance is very, very expensive. And again, that is primarily because of the loss of um, economies of scale. So we had to cost out under the, this exercise the assumption that each entity would have to staff their own. Each entity would have to um, rent or purchase equipment. The cost model includes the cost of a tractor, for example. It's not clear, we're not able to determine whether each entity would want a tractor or need a tractor. But those are the kinds of things that are really costed out under the Habitat Conservation Plan. Um, another thing I really want to add here is that the Habitat Conservation Plan assumes that um, the cost of monitoring is covered by the cooperative. So that's a cost then that goes into the HMP annual cost. So for the sake of time, I'll just move through and I assume there's a, yeah. So I, I did understand what you were talking about the economies of scale. Collaboratively, on one page, each of the jurisdictions under the HMP, our overhead costs are about sixty grand, and so collectively, we're at three hundred and sixty-one, three hundred fifty-one thousand. If you add the jurisdictions involved, compared to four ninety-one. So then, now when you get to this slide, which your cost of program administration costs don't match, but it's off only a little bit. So the question that I have, if your assumptions that you went through with us are that you're able to eliminate some of the HCP monitoring costs, why is the cost, I will just look at for the county, am I reading the county? As um, it's a million three, why is it more if they're required to do less? I, I'm gonna answer that in part is we're shifting responsibility that under an HCP would have been collective. I understand that. But when you're talking about the cost under the HMP to the county, I, don't, I, I just don't see how if you have less total in the total, I get the allocations a little bit. Why it's so much more expensive for the HMP. Right, so staffing is a big, big driver of cost. And so I, I don't want to, I know you acknowledge the economies of scale being lost, but that's a big driver. And and I was going to get to this. I have a summary slide that covers this, but okay. to get to it now because this is an eye popping number, right? Yes. Um, there's a lot. They have considerable amount of land to to manage. <coughs> the habitat management plan addresses 18 species. The habitat conservation plan proposes for yeah 10 less eight. Eight species. So what this includes here, this this row, HMA management maintenance, is is monitoring for each individual species, management of each individual species, reporting annually on the results of your management on each individual species. So we assume that the reporting itself might cost a little less each 
here for compliance things under a habitat conservation plan, but under an HMP, you have more um, species to address. And so, again, these are, these are really ballpark estimates, and there are a lot of things that can be determined. So in follow-up, the habitat management plan has 18 species. The ACP has eight, correct? Correct. But we're already contractually obligated, the county, for the 18. So how does the ACP meet the obligations of the HMP? If we're looking at an HCP, I'm suggesting under what you've just said to me, is that Marina, the county, those of us with HMP responsibilities, still have those 10 other species that we have to layer the cost on top of the ACP. Would that be correct? That is a really good question, and that is one I have asked U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service directly. And so the, the um, as you probably know, you might not get the answer, as clear an answer as you would like, <laughs> which is, was the case for me, but um, essentially the Habitat Conservation Plan monitors and manages what we call natural communities, grasslands, oak woodlands, and reports on that. And the, the message I got was that if you are doing the management under the HCP and you're complying with the terms of the HCP and managing not just for those eight 